Okay, we will go ahead and get started and welcome everyone around the world, enthusiasts of R and Shiny, um, to join our latest installment of the Shiny Developer Series. I am your host for the webinar, Eric Nance. I am also joined by Curtis Kephart, our, our studio's community manager. And we are very excited to talk about a lot of great tricks and tips around enhancing user interfaces and getting to know packages such as Shiny Widgets from the Dreamers company. And for that, we are joined by our special guests, Victor Perrier and Fanny Meyer, um, who are joining us from um, or across the world. So Fanny and, and Victor, thank you so much for joining us. And if you could give us, our listeners, a short introduction on your backgrounds and how you got started with R and with Shiny. And right before we do that, let me remind our audience that if you have questions to ask of Victor and Fanny during the conversation, please feel free to put those in the question panel or the chat panel. So yeah, let's let's go ahead and, and throw it to you, uh, Victor and Fanny, if you could give us, like I said, a short back, little bit of background on yourselves and how you got started with R and with Shiny. Hey, uh, to begin, uh, thank you very much for your invitation. We are very happy to be here and to talk about R and Shiny with you. I'm Fanny and Victor is uh, my, uh, my uh, colleague. Uh, Hello. Uh, and uh, Victor and I studied mathematics and statistics in different places in France. So uh, that's in these places uh, we were to add our first introduction to R at the beginning of 2010, almost 10 years ago. Uh, after our study, uh, we were both hired in a consulting firm in Paris. Uh, uh, until then, uh, we didn't know uh, each other. It's, uh, it was a few years later that we were met uh, in a project in a, for the French electricity company. Uh, they had a, a big initiative to convert SAS program to R script. Victor has been developing his first application there in 2013. Um, it was always it was only three years after that uh, I began Shiny. Victor was already a good expert, uh, and I was al always asking him a question about Shiny and uh, JavaScript, like uh, how do you do this? Uh, how can I do this or that? And uh, he sent me script by email. We integrated uh, JavaScript by end. And there were more and more little snippets of code everywhere. But uh, we didn't use Git in this time. It wasn't uh, very clean, not very maintainable. But uh, it's our dreamers, our company, and Shiny Widget, our first packages, were born. Yeah, that's that's a great background. It's a, a very uh, interesting journey. It's actually a, a thread that we kind of heard in other uh, webinars where a lot of us get started training with traditional, say, statistics or mathematics, and then virtue of our work, we we start learning R, and then we start learning the capabilities that Shiny can bring us. So that's that's definitely a fascinating uh, background. Um, Victor, do you want to share a little bit about yourself too? Uh, yes, uh, hi, so I'm Victor. Uh, yes, so like Fanny said, uh, I have also a background in statistics and uh, I made my first uh, Shiny applications in 2013. And uh, there was a big project for the French electricity provider. We made a lot of Shiny applications and uh, we wanted uh, to custom them. So it's how uh, we have started to work on uh, Shiny widgets package. Very cool. Um, so, uh, Fanny, I'll throw it back to you. Maybe you could tell us a bit more about uh, the, your consulting company, Dreamers, kind of their your mission and what kind of projects you support, things like that. Let's see, did we lose audio? Let's see, let me do a quick check out. Victor and Fani, are you still with us?
All right, uh, everyone, sorry for the technical difficulties. Uh, are there... Oh, there we are. Uh, Hi, Eric. Can you hear uh, us? Yeah, now we can. Okay, thanks. Yeah, a little hiccup there. Yeah, please, please go ahead. <laughs> so uh, I say uh, Dreamers was born two years ago, and uh, Victor and I are both complementary in our work. I like to design user interface and Victor make my dream come true by developing them. So we drew a lot of shiny application for our client. We develop application from scratch or we use uh, existing application to improve their design, such as uh, corporate entity, for example, and make them uh, more robust. But uh, we don't uh, only develop shiny application, but uh, everything uh, around R, training, for example, uh, helping the team of data scientists to use, go use R every day. And uh, we also develop packages uh, or tools uh, such as Adin, for example, or data analysis and algorithm like machine learning uh, algorithm. And uh, we spend uh, part of our time on open, on open sources. It is important for us to contribute to the R ecosystem because it's our, our daily working tools. Um, currently, we are free, but uh, we hope to grow up uh, step by step. Yeah, that's an interesting point. It's a great segue to what I wanted to talk about next is that you have been really um, generous and, and diligent with open sourcing many of your efforts that um, I'm showing here on your uh, GitHub repository page for Dreamers. And um, I actually got to know your your uh, work um, through Shiny Widgets first, but as I'm showing here, there, that's certainly not the only package you develop. You have a good mix of Shiny related packages, as well as those that are wrapping HTML widgets or other um, enhanced HTML like functionality. Um, are these created kind of as part of a larger mission of bringing kind of innovative web applications or parts of that built with R? And does your does your work at Dreamers inform a lot of the packages that you're making here? Uh, yes, that's sure. We make uh, we like to make packages on Shiny because we use a lot Shiny in our work. And I found uh, personally very fun to make uh, shiny applications. So some functionalities uh, were things that we use on a regular basis, so it made uh, sense to package them. That was the case uh, for shiny widgets. Shiny widgets is definitely our most used package, I think. The goal, uh, the goal of the package was simple at start. It uh, provides some alternatives to classic uh, shiny inputs widgets to give your applications a look a little bit different by just changing uh, some controls. Parts of the widget included in Shiny uh, widgets just have uh, some functionality than the classic ones, but with a little plus. For example, you can have uh, checkboxes with colors or font or icons, or with uh, the appearance of a button. Uh, some other widgets have some extra functionalities, like the picker widget, which I think is the most used in the in the whole package. A simple feature is that you can select or deselect all choices in the drop-down menu. Shiny widget is full of little features like that uh, to help uh, you improve your applications. Yeah, actually, this is this is great background. In fact, it's probably a good time to let's um, look at Shiny Widgets in action. So if you don't mind, I'm going to make you presenter for the video. And then I'd love for you to pull up uh, any uh, quick demonstration that you'd like to with, um, with showing uh, Shiny Widgets in action. So let's see. Yeah, sure. That works. OK, let me cook them my end. So you have control now. Feel free to share when you're ready. Yeah, can you see my screen? Let me see. Yep, I, I well, hold on. Yeah, I do see it. Yep, perfect. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it's uh, here, yeah, right? I developed the Shiny Widget uh, packages. So there is a simple uh, function you can use is uh, if you start uh, with Shiny Widgets, is the Shiny Widget Gallery. 
It, uh, they have uh, all the widgets av available in the package in uh, one application. So you can launch it with the Shiny Widget Gallery functions. And it opens a Shiny Dashboard applications with uh, all the input av available in the package. And uh, you can uh, see uh, what it looks like and uh, see the code see, uh, to, uh, to recreate it or use it in your own applications. For example, a PKI input, which, which is uh, very used, and the select all and uh, the select all uh, functions. And so, uh, Shiny Widget is full of uh, little, uh, little widgets like, like that that you can integrate in your applications uh, to, uh, to to give them a look a little bit different. So if you want uh, to uh, to launch the gallery, the gallery is hosted online on our Shiny Server too, but uh, you can launch it uh, directly into your Air console if you installed the package. Yeah, let me say real quick, I'm so appreciative of you putting this gallery in the package itself because to me, it's not only a visual way of seeing all the different widgets that this is uh, offering to the user, but it's also given me snippets of code to literally copy it into my app, but I almost view it as like a very interactive help kind of documentation, but where you can get your, your hands on and try things out. So um, this was, I just mentioned again, this has been a huge help for me personally, because I use Shiny widgets in practically every Shiny app I ever developed in my work and even for my personal projects. And I, it's great to pull this up and refer back to, oh, that's how I do the material switch, or that's how I'm going to do that interesting select input where I can select everything at once. So let me just say on behalf of myself and hopefully other Shiny users, thank you so much for putting this gallery in there. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. But uh, yeah, I am a big user too. Uh, I like uh, to copy paste my own code, so it's uh, useful to me uh, too. Yeah. So uh, maybe as you're as you're exploring this a bit, what are some of the features here? I'm just thinking off the top of my head that were probably the most difficult to develop, and maybe you could share a little bit about that. Yes, so, so behind uh, each widget, uh, there is uh, either some JavaScript libraries or just uh, CSS libraries. There's some widgets are pretty simple to integrate with Shiny. You do, like uh, all the checkboxes or what your buttons, you can just use the pre existing uh, Shiny input bindings. Some of them are more com complicated. I think. Uh, the drop down button where you can hide the inputs is uh, is uh, also uh, a lot of uh, get a lot of requests <laughs> and uh, it takes me more time uh, to make it work uh, properly. But yes, there are some widgets that have custom JavaScript uh, behind. Some of us don't. Uh, it's just a CSS uh, to custom uh, their appearance. Yeah, that's that's quite interesting. And um, one of the things I was thinking about as we were um, talking about the, the preparing for this webinar is that as I was familiar getting familiar with Shiny widgets and the rest of your packages, it sure appears to someone like me that both of you have developed excellent skills in terms of using web technologies like CSS and JavaScript and things of that nature. And you did mention at the top of our webinar that you had you know excellent background in mathematics and statistics. So it sounds like this is, these have been kind of skill sets that you have picked up on the fly. And if so, that's really impressive. And maybe tell us a bit about how you've been uh, developing these skills of harnessing, like you said, CSS and JavaScript functionality with, with uh, the development of Shiny widgets and other packages. Uh, Fani and Victor, are you are you still with us? Uh, 
collaboration from other people work, of course, as a shiny team, but also Ramnat and uh, Kent Russell, who made uh, so much to bring cool JavaScript stuff to, to R. Kent Russell is uh, one of the most impressive people I know online. I uh, yeah, personally a lot of uh, R hero. is definitely one of them. Uh, so we are not JavaScript expert. Uh, we just connect awesome JavaScript libs uh, with uh, Shiny. And this is made easy by the impressive uh, flexibility of Shiny and uh, HTML tools uh, packages. Shiny input uh, binding system is very powerful. Uh, there's a lot of examples on Shiny website to how, how to use it. There's a great series of tutorials made by uh, Trace Analytics that are just awesome. Take a look if you so cool widgets you want to use in your application. Sometimes there are even no JavaScript required. You can just use uh, existing input bindings. And uh, Shiny and HTML tools uh, packages are great for users, but also for developers. And that's very cool. Great. Unfortunately, we lost the first bit of that, but I did catch, you know, the, the set of resources that you've, been sh that you've been using as reference. And I, too, echo how powerful those um, the documentation sites are, of course, with Shiny itself, as well as, like you, you mentioned from Fritz Analytics, that walkthrough of how to harness JavaScript more effectively. Um, these are things that when I started with Shiny, I had no idea this other world that was out there and seeing kind of those tutorials and those resources have been have been very helpful. Um, so speaking of kind of resources and other um, others in the community, I've observed um, just because I'm a shiny enthusiast, I keep track of other projects within this ecosystem. And I've seen some looks like excellent collaborations between the work that you're doing and even some of the previous guests that we've had on this uh, shiny developer series such as Colin Fay from ThinkR and uh, David Grangen from our interface. Maybe you could share a little bit to our audience how those collaborations came about. Uh, yes, uh, it's uh, because the, Frank the R Frankel Fund community is getting larger and larger, and uh, several uh, initiatives uh, have been put in place to animate it. <laughs> Uh, for example, uh, Slack uh, was created uh, to ask questions, share news about R, or just uh, have drink. For example, uh, in all the French town, um, this Slack helps us to get closer and better discuss. Uh, there is uh, even the French-speaking Air User Association born a few months ago. Its name is Molière. It is a mention of a great French uh, author and poet. Uh, Colin Fay uh, is, the president, is the president of this association and uh, we all try to be active in this, in this association. And uh, all these initiatives uh, allow us to simplify, to simplify collaboration. And uh, we we have uh, we lo love a lot uh, David very much. Uh, we share our office with David Goel, the author of uh, GGRAF and Flextable, and we help uh, each other every day. And uh, we also co collaborate with David Gronjon uh, on packages uh, related uh, Shiny. Well, that's that's interesting. It's a bit of a small world too, in a sense, where I also use a uh, David Gohel's uh, officer package extensively for when I have to make slides in R, and that's it's so interesting that you've all been able to kind of network together and, and share learnings on that. Um, that that's that's a heck of an office mate, I must say. I wish I had the pleasure of that. Um, but one thing um, that I wanted to get your thoughts on, maybe Victor, you can chime in on this, is. You know, throughout this webinar series, we've, we've shown some really great capabilities. Obviously, now we're sharing what you've all been doing with, with Dreamers and the packages you're open sourcing. Um, but for the audience that are developing Shiny apps and they're trying to get to this kind of next level, you're, you, they're done with making these beginner applications and now they want to start building more intermediate, you might dare say complex applications, but they want to get started on the right footing, so to speak. So maybe you could share some advice you have from the work you've been doing and obviously uh, creating these packages that these this audience of developers can 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 follow to get started more effectively in these more complex situations. 
Uh, yes, sure. Um, so my first advice uh, is uh, maybe a little bit uh, complicated to, to follow, but uh, if you can uh, find uh, someone to work with, I'm very lucky to have uh, Fanny. It is it's uh, thanks to her that I can concentrate on the technical aspect of the applications that we we make. Fanny makes sure that our applications are usable and interesting. All the packages we develop are a common effort. So what features are interesting allow to integrate them into Shiny. Uh, my second advice, uh, easier to set up, uh, will be to structure your code uh, properly using uh, Shiny modules. I think it's a uh, great feature. Uh, you can make a small piece of code and gather them in your main application after that. And don't get uh, too much distracted by all the things you can do in Shiny. The important part of a Shiny application is what you want to show to your, your users and how they are going to, you, to see it. So I think it's important to make effort on the look of your application. Even if your data and statistics are awesome, if your application look ba looks bad, people won't use it. Uh, don't integrate dozens of features or too many inputs, keep, keep it simple and pretty. And um, when the most important thing, I think, is to be curious. Uh, there's a lot of resources, blogs, application galleries. You just have to look at it a little bit. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Go to our studio community. There's probably someone who got the same issue before and solve it already. And don't limit uh, yourself on the thing that you you like. If you see something cool on the website, maybe that exists in Chinese, or if not, maybe it's possible to integrate it. And uh, don't be afraid to show your applications. That's super easy to deploy an application on ChinaApps.io. Uh, and uh, if uh, it's uh, possible uh, next year, uh, participate to the the new uh, shiny uh, shiny contest. Uh, if there is one, it's a great opportunity to show your skills and uh, to make a fun application. Yeah, that's excellent advice. And um, I'll just give a little teaser out there that there may or may not be a possibility for that next year, but also even independent of that, the, the submissions that we saw this year, and obviously actually your group did a great submission as well. Um, these are the ways that I think and, and again, this is going to be Eric kind of getting on a soapbox here. I think that was kind of missing in previous kind of, you know, networking or, or learning about Shiny is seeing like in the real world usage, so to speak, how these apps can be built. And the fact that we can go to those contest submissions and get the code behind them, get an interactive environment to actually try it out ourselves with minimal effort. Um, to me, learning by example has been a huge step in my journey with Shiny, and I've definitely learned from the example apps that you've shared and many others in the community. So I really enjoy that advice, too. Um, and I want to remind our audience as well, uh, please, uh, if you have questions for our panel, please go ahead and submit that into the chat or the questions section. And we actually do have one that is a good segue to one of the newer uh, efforts that you all have made. Um, I'm going to probably not get the pronunciation correct at all, but your team recently built an excellent, its you might say a shiny gadget or an add-in that helps you build ggplot plots very effectively with a very intuitive interface. And I'm, I'm going to get it wrong. Esquise. <laughs> um, maybe you could share a little bit about developing that package, kind of the motivation for it and what the value you see of that for um, the uh, DR user in general. I don't know who wants to take that one. Looks like our audio issues have unfortunately uh, reared their head again. Hopefully they will get resolved. Well, Victor and Fani, hopefully your audio comes back. We see you're sharing your screen. Unfortunately, we can't hear you right now. Uh, 
Hello, Eric. Oh, you're back. Okay, great. Sorry for that. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Please continue. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so uh, Esquisse is a French word uh, for, for sketch, and the, the motivation uh, behind uh, was to, to quickly uh, quickly plot for data using ggplot2 because uh, we think that's a very powerful tool. And uh, <laughs> we just uh, wanted to to make uh, some plots uh, quickly and uh, to uh, to explore data and so uh, that's how uh, Eskis uh, was born but uh, yes behind it's uh, all uh, shiny and uh, some modules that you can uh, use uh, Eskis into another application it's uh, just a big uh, big modules that you can integrate into your own application if you want uh, so you can re reuse it Well, this is really powerful stuff. And the fact that in my previous uh, work with Shiny, I would end up kind of redoing, I mean, this wasn't around back when I first learned Shiny, but it really is fascinating to see how easy it would be to incorporate that into an existing app. And then I don't have to have the overhead of building all those inputs, all those integrations with the data frame myself. It's all taken care of in that module. So. Uh, those that know me know that I've been a big proponent of the modules, but that that package right there is a great example of how powerful that can be. Um, so I'll definitely be using that in my apps in the future for sure. Um, <laughs> and we've been we've been getting some other questions, so thanks so much for um, sending these. Sort of kind of looks like some time. Um, now one of our questions that have been submitted is whether you have have any examples or you have experience with um, analyzing or using Shiny for time series data? Has that ever come up in your projects? Uh, yes, sure. Uh, we have made uh, some applications uh, to uh, to display time series. We, uh, we worked on a project uh, to, uh, to make uh, forecast and uh, call uh, received in the call center and uh, there was a lot of time series and uh, we use the billboard package uh, to to make the, the plots and uh, yes it's okay uh, sometimes uh, we have uh, to to use a uh, time series oh that's great yeah and i do see there are definitely a lot of widgets out there to visualize time series data quite effectively so that's that's certainly good that shiny could be could be useful for that um so one other question that gets to um, let's see, let me let me pull my chat here. Um, you you've mentioned we we talked about earlier in the webinar about some of the collaborations that you've been able to set up effectively with. Obviously, we mentioned uh, David and and Colin and others. Um, how what for those that are maybe getting into shiny and starting to you maybe do their own their own consulting or things like that. What advice do you have on finding uh, collaborators that you can share your your development with or or get new ideas from what, what are some things you might think of for that oh uh, yes i think uh, you have to need uh, to uh, to meet the the, uh, the potentially future collaborator in person because uh my me i uh, i'm lucky to to i find a find you but uh i think it's uh how two two people can connect and uh you have to, to talk to each other. But uh, funny, it was in person. Uh, David de Grandjean, I collaborated, collaborated with him uh, since uh, the beginning of Shiny Widget. I think it's uh, two years ago. And uh, we only meet uh, this year at uh, User in uh, Toulouse uh, at the Air Conference. So it's uh, just uh, how you, you feel the, the, the people. But uh, even if you don't meet uh, them in person, uh, you, you can uh, collaborate with them and uh, and make a good work. Yeah, that's great. And um, obviously, I'm I'm of a different case where I'm at a an enterprise, so I don't do as much like consulting externally. Um, I do a lot of my consulting internally, but I do think that there are obviously the more connections you can make at these meetups, at these conferences, is going to be very valuable to setting up those relationships and even virtually we do see hopefully some great tools available 
um, via, of course, I'll, I'll do a, a quick plug for obviously the R Studio community portal with the shiny um, tag there. We have lots of good discussion there. And yeah, the local meetups like an R user group and I know the R ladies is coming very up, up the forefront of doing great meetups as well. So certainly the opportunity is there to start networking and start getting new ideas. Um, so yeah, that, that's that's great advice. Um, we do have a bit bit of extra time in the Q&A. So obviously if you have questions, please feel free to chat, um, put those in the chat. I do have more um, kind of getting into the dev story, so to speak, of some of the work you've been doing. Um, there was another package that I started exploring recently that looks like it wraps either a JavaScript or an HTML widget functionality. Um, it's called Billboarder. Uh, maybe you could give us a little bit of motiv motivation behind Billboarder and how you use that in your projects, if you don't mind. Uh, yes, sure. Billboarder is uh, an HTML widget so to make uh, some uh, graphics with uh, G3. Uh, the motivation then was to have uh, flexible tools to make uh, some uh, interactive graphics. We use uh, a lot of uh, you use uh, a lot of uh, a lot of I uh, I shatter, but uh, there is some issue with the license so. Uh, for our client, we need uh, an open source tool that uh, you can use. Uh, you can use freely. So we started a build border to make some basic basic uh, plots, and uh, yep. that was our first HTML widget. So uh, <laughs> that was an, an interesting uh, development uh, adventure. Oh, so this was the first one you made. So I'm sure you had a lot of learning along the way doing this, but it does, I'm showing it on the screen here. It's got a lot of nice interactivity, um, tool tips or bar charts, obviously line charts as uh, or more bar charts, you have line charts. Um, this <clears throat> this looks like it's very lightweight, but very um, nice syntax to use. So I'm gonna definitely look at this more carefully. Um, but or maybe if you don't mind expanding on some of the challenges you had in developing this, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, yes, so the, um, I think the, the most complicated uh, thing to to uh, to do when uh, you develop a package like that it's uh, to have a proper API, uh, API to the uh, to how the user can use uh, your function uh, to make good documentations and make examples so people can reuse it uh, and uh, and so on. And uh, that's, uh, I think, uh, is the the most difficult part because uh, everyone is uh, is uh, is familiar with uh, ggplot and the aesthetic and the mapping, but in JavaScript it's a little bit different uh, than uh, than that. So uh, that was uh, the most uh, difficult part. After that, the, the JavaScript part in the package is not very big. <laughs> And uh, thanks to HTML widgets, it's uh, pretty uh, pretty easy to integrate uh, some uh, GS libs in uh, into R. Interesting, yeah. And we've had you know good discussion on widgets um, from Nick Strayer in one of our previous webinars. I think it's the tooling behind it's getting easier to get started with it. Um, one thing that I personally am trying to get more familiar with is when you see a what I'll call a very complex JavaScript widget out there. Um, making sure that it's not too um, ambitious or too intimidating to wrap that into a, a nice R-friendly wrapper to it. Um, but I'm always fascinated with how the process has gone for people like you and others in the community that have found these innovative widgets out there and how you've been able to turn that around and give the novices like me an easy way to use it in our Shiny app. So definitely a billboarder is one that I'm definitely keeping an eye on. But maybe we could take a little bit of time to talk about, you know, you've had what well, looks like a really successful 2019 with the packages you've developed and it looks like your consulting work has gone quite well. Maybe give a quick uh, view in the future, so to speak. What do you think are some of the key threads or key concepts or developments that you'd like your team to work on for 2020, if you don't mind sharing a little bit about that? Were you able to hear me? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. We have, uh, 
I threw you yes, a curveball there. <laughs> yes. It's true. If you can't talk about the confidential stuff, don't feel free. I just want to get your take on some of the new ideas you might be thinking about. Ah, the, the next idea of things, I think there, there is a lot of things to do with uh, with uh, React and the React R uh, package by uh, Alan Deepert and uh, Kent Russell. There's uh, some interesting tools to, uh, to integrate uh, in, uh, in R, actually. I have some ideas, but uh, little time uh, <laughs> to, to implement them. <laughs> Yeah, that's interesting. I've been keeping an eye on, and I had the pleasure of hearing Alan talk about that at the recent R Studio conference. And it does sound like a fascinating integration that could take things to another level. Um, and again, it's like trying to learn all this. <laughs> There's only so many hours in the day, but I'd be curious um, how how y'all approach the, approach that effort. Um, yeah, so maybe we'll go back to your uh, Dreamers uh, GitHub profile here. Um, are there other kind of utilities that we haven't touched on here that you think um, maybe don't get a lot of attention in the community that you'd like our audience to be aware of as, as we uh, wind down here? Oh, uh, yes, yeah, so maybe the, the fresh package. It's uh, our last one. Uh, it, uh... Oh, yeah, fresh. Okay, yeah, please tell us a bit about that. I only got familiar with this a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, please share. It allowed to uh, customize uh, bootstrap, uh, bootstrap teams, and uh, it made possible via the, the SaaS package by RStudio. And I think it's very powerful because you can use uh, all the colors you want into uh, into bootstrap, and uh, it's just uh, compiling uh, CSS. That was our, our last uh, package. And uh, we use it uh, a lot to uh, to make application for our client uh, to. Uh, to integrate the corporate design into into shiny. Yeah, that's that's an interesting point. Uh, I've seen, you know, when I would see your applications that you shared in the past, and I would look at, wow, that theme does not come with shiny dashboard, or or how how is that possible? So it sounds like this package is giving someone like me a uh, easy way to change specific um, portions of a color scheme. Or our font sizes, things like that, with looks like pretty simple functions here. That sounds like the motivation for it. Uh, yes, well, Shiny use uh, use Bootstrap, and the Bootstrap it's very flexible. There are some package around it, and uh, there's also the Shiny Times uh, package that uh, allow to use uh, custom themes. But uh, you can just use a pre-compiled theme. So here you can uh, customize uh, all the colors and uh, use uh, what you want. Uh. Yeah, so are there any types of Shiny UI packages that this one out for? Um, it looks like it works with standard Shiny and hopefully Shiny Dashboard and Shiny Dashboard Plus. Are there others that it might not work with well? Uh, it's mainly, mainly made to, to work with Shiny and uh, the, the default, uh, default theme in Shiny. But yes, it works also with uh, Shiny Dashboard. And uh, maybe uh, I, uh, I want to integrate uh, some more themes like uh, the, the R interface uh, themes. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's possible to do, to do that. Uh, for example, Tableau Dash or uh, BS4 Dash is a David Grandjean package. And uh, I, I need to discuss uh, it with, uh, with him, but I think it's possible to, to integrate them too. Yeah, well, I'll be in as like a plus one, so to speak, on hopefully those integrations coming through because I am using, to be fully transparent, um, all the apps I make it right now in my day to day work are using either Shiny Dash Plus or BS4 Dash. And I'm looking into learning, of course, the Shiny Mobile or Shiny F7 work that David's working on. So anything that you can do to make theming that easier is a welcome change for me, um, only because I'm still learning the ins and outs of CSS. And I'm sure there are others in our audience that are probably laughing at me for being somewhat intimidated by uh, configuring CSS files. But Anything you can do to lessen the, the learning curve or the friction and changing like one thing of your app where you don't have to change everything, maybe just one part, 
um, we will definitely welcome that, welcome that integration. But at, at least at least as of now, it sounds like the the shiny dashboard UI toolkits are are very uh, playing nicely with it. So certainly, this sounds like a, a great package for those in our audience who they haven't heard of it to get to know. Um, any others that you want to give a quick plug to? Maybe um, actually, I'll 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 ask this one too. Logging has always been a challenge for me um, in terms of figuring out in my backend processes of Shiny Apps what is happening and how I might be able to use that to give the the um, the Shiny user of my apps a little more transparency into what's happening. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about Shiny Logs and what problems that's trying to solve. that we made for a client and uh, we are uh, the client was okay to, to open source it um, the, the goal is to able to record every input so used by the user like uh, every input so a user use in a session so in a, when you use uh, your application like that it's uh, you can uh, you can see uh, which input i used what input are generated uh, and you have basic logs about uh, who comes to your uh, see your application and uh, for example the number of connection by day uh, in on your application and uh, see uh, if uh, maybe there's some input uh, that are never used in your application uh, so with uh, with that uh, package uh, you, you can uh, discover it and for example uh, here you can see the most of your tabs in the shiny widget gallery so that's the application i uh, show uh, earlier and the, the most uh, viewed tab is the picker input ones <laughs> so so uh, and the, the Pretty, it's uh, check boxes and radio buttons. So I think uh, the picker input widget in uh, Shiny widget is <laughs> the most uh, used. Well, this is fascinating, actually. Um, I, I wish I'd pay more attention to this earlier, but it sounds like, you know, a lot of times for those of us in the enterprise, we'll, we'll develop an app for internal use. And then whether it's some higher management or some other organization will always ask us a question, well, you built this great application, Eric, but how many people are using it and what parts are they using the most? Now, I've never had a good yeah. answer for that. <laughs> this looks like that might solve some of that problem, right? Oh, uh, yes, sure, but because you, if, um, well, we use it a uh, lot <laughs> for, for us. Uh, sometimes you, you develop a big shiny application with lo a lot of tabs and a lot of uh, functionalities. But at the at the end, uh, the the users uh, just uh, just uh, saw the first one and never used uh, the buttons uh, you put on, on the applications. So that's interesting uh, to know uh, how your users uh, use your application. Yeah, this is you know sometimes I, I joke that in the previous webinars I'll have a lot of these kind of aha moments. This is one of them for sure. I, I have lots of ideas to put this in use um it, it you kind of delved on the point maybe you didn't dive on this specific but i'll ask anyway is you've obviously been developing shiny apps for your clients as part of your work um, maybe you could take us a little bit um in terms of how you structure the idea of getting the intent of your clients like what they want out of the application and how you go about that kind of that consultation in terms of getting like prototypes of user interfaces and that continual feedback as you go. Maybe you could share us a bit about how you go about, you know, setting up a collaboration with a client and some of the, the advice you might have to go from start to finish and developing an application effectively. I'm not sure if that makes sense. Uh, yes, but um, at, uh, to begin, we, we talk uh, to the client to, to see what he wants to to represent, uh, what data he, he has, and uh, after that, uh, uh, finally uh, make some uh, some sketch uh, of the user interface and uh, how the on, on paper huh? it's it's <laughs> with. Uh, no, no code required here. It's uh, just to to have a, a first uh, first glance at uh, what the application can look. 
And uh, after that, uh, when uh, with the client, we have uh, figured out uh, how to, to make the application. We started developing it uh, and uh, integrate uh, some functionalities. And uh, yes, we use a lot of our own packages to, to make our applications. Well, that's always great when you can um, use the tools you've developed into your own projects. And I, I definitely have somewhat similar stories on my end, too. And that will, of course, every project gives you ideas to enhance your interfaces, enhance the package's functionality. Um, I'm sure sometimes that's easier to do than in other times, depending on the request. But certainly that, that work can inform it a lot. Um, have you been able to, um, once you identify the, the key the purpose of an app and things like that. Um, tell me a bit about, have you had to interact with a lot of complicated backend technologies to power like the app processing, or is it been typically that if this app is deployed on a version of like say, Shiny, Shiny Server Pro or any of the other deployment methods, have you ever had to tap into any other computing architectures besides say a single server environment to power your applications? Oh uh, yes, we uh, we have everything. Uh, uh, so some clients have uh, asked to connect, uh, so it's uh, pretty easy to to deploy the applications uh, given uh, some uh, some area. And uh, some of them have used uh, one little server. You have uh, to to rent one and uh, install a shiny server on it. Uh, and uh, yes, there's uh, any kind of infrastructure, but. Uh, Yes, uh, at the beginning, at the French electricity provider, there is a two shiny server pro, so uh, <laughs> that was easy to to deploy applications. That's cool. I'm, I know I'm beginning to explore um, multiple environments and scalability, and obviously there have been some great talks about that in previous, say, conference recordings and things like that, but there, there's always some challenges trying to figure out the best back end for a given situation, especially um, in my work, I have to do a lot of high performance computing and figuring out the best back ends for that can always be a bit of a challenge. But I think it um, sounds like you've had a, an interesting uh, experience, hopefully with, with, um, with your work too. Um, so I know we're winding down our time here. I want to make sure I give uh, uh, you, uh, you both uh, a chance to, Maybe share with us um, some ways that our, our audience could um, keep up with your efforts and get in touch with you if they have questions or ideas for the future. Where would you like to point them to? Uh, I think the, the most easy, uh, easy way to contact us is maybe Twitter or by mail. Uh, you can uh, for sure uh, open issue on and, uh, and our packages. We, uh, we try to look and uh, to to respond uh, quickly. Um, whereas by by email, some people contact us by email, but yes, by uh, we are we are present on uh, Twitter. We um, we have a long uh, plan to to make a blog, but uh, it's not ready yet, so you have to wait. And uh, you you can follow us on Twitter to see the update and uh, and work. And there's a Shiny Gallery, you see, we have our, our own uh, Shiny server. So you can uh, go to our Shiny Gallery. And there's also uh, the talks we made uh, to the R conference uh, that, I, uh, that are available on our GitHub, uh, GitHub profile. Great. Yeah, we'll put, a, we'll put a link to all that in, in the post that we send out after this. Um, and maybe um, somewhat along those lines, if there is um, someone or if there is those in our audience that would love to contribute to some of the work you're doing via the packages, um, do you have some packages in particular that you would like maybe those that are getting to know Shiny a bit and would like to help? Are there good uh, packages you recommend for them to contribute to um, that you would like to point them to? Oh, but uh, that uh, mostly depends on the, what package they, uh, they are using. But uh, I think we have a package for almost everything in Chinese. So uh, mm -hmm. you can just take one. And uh, if you want to collaborate, uh, you are welcome. Uh, we definitely need uh, some help uh, sometimes. <laughs> 
Sure. Yeah. I just want to make sure that um, for those in the audience, I want to get involved with the community. I mean, I'm speaking for myself a little bit here. Hopefully others can resonate with sometimes the best way to get started is to find, say, an issue on one of the packages, uh, GitHub repos and see if you can solve it or at least give a interesting dialogue to help get to a solution. And sometimes that opens the doors for many possibilities. Um, so yeah. I, I definitely see that on your GitHub uh, page here, you've got a lot of packages here to choose from, like you said, that cover the full gamut. So I would say, yeah, just go ahead and check out issues. And it sounds like your your team is going to be receptive to any contributions on those fronts, right? Yes, and uh, we appreciate uh, feedback also if you use our, our package and uh, show us uh, how you, you use it and uh, <laughs> if everything uh, works fine for you. Great, great. Well, it's certainly been a, a great pleasure to get to know both of you and to get to know the work you've been doing, as well as, as uh, I mentioned already, the, these excellent set of packages that are released for free to all of us shiny enthusiasts to make our apps much better than they would be by default. Um, lots of lots of interesting toolkits here. Um, so certainly, uh, uh, Victor and Fani, thank you again so much for joining us and being part of this webinar. Thank you Eric, very much. Thank you. <laughs> and sorry for the, the sound uh, trouble. Oh, it's, uh, it happens. Technology, even in 2019, is not a solved problem, as they say. <laughs> um, Thank you very much for your yeah. work and uh, for the, the Shiny Dev series. Very interesting. Oh, well, I'm glad we could, we could offer some great content. And I'll remind our audience that we will have one more session in December. Um, we will welcome uh, Nathan Teeter to talk about um, um, the Yonder package and get to know some of the insights behind that. And um, we'll also at that time have more plugs about what we may be up to next year. So definitely stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, if you want to access the recordings for the previous uh, sessions that we've had in the series, the best place to go is the sub website, shinydevseries.com. You can see a schedule for the webinars and obviously we'll have a link to the recording on this once we process that early next week. And as I mentioned, we have one more session uh, in December and then we are um, actively planning out next year. And definitely if you have feedback on the webinars and feedback on the Shiny Dev series in general, don't hesitate to use the contact page and you'll never guess what powers that. Um, Miss Shiny, of course, um, please feel free to send your, con your feedback there. I've been getting some great feedback recently, so please uh, keep that coming. And um, yeah, with that, we will close up shop here. And just a reminder, if you didn't see my tweet about this yesterday, there is another webinar starting in five minutes to look at um, 15 great tips on enhancing your R Markdown workflows with uh, Ihui Down himself, Ihui Sia. Um, please tune in for that if you're available. So with that, we will close up shop here on the Shiny Dev Series. So until next time, we will see you right back here in December. Thanks a lot, everybody.